In this tutorial, we will see how to schedule production and aggregate planning using the level strategy. This is also known as the inventory strategy. With the level strategy, we schedule the same amount of production each period and allow inventory and back orders to handle period by period fluctuations. In this first example, a company has demand of 90 in period 1, 125 in period 2, 115 in period 3, 110 in period 4, 125 in period 5, 150 in period 6, 125 in period 7, and 120 in period 8. That gives us total demand across the 8 periods of 960. Assume that they will have adequate regular time production capacity to handle all of the production and there will be no hiring and layoffs. Regular production costs $10 per unit. Inventory holding cost is $1 per unit per period. Back order cost is $2 per unit per period. Schedule production and cost out the plan. We need 960 to meet demand during the 8 periods, so 960 divided by 8 equals 120. So, we need to produce 120 each period. Of course, had 120 not been a whole number, we would have had to round up to a whole number. That would give us a small amount of inventory at the end of the 8 periods. While not necessary, we could have avoided that by producing a few less in the last period to make the ending inventory zero. We will explore that in a later example. The planning grid is shown on the slide with the 120 scheduled in regular time production. Since overtime and subcontracting will not be used in this problem, those production and cost lines have been removed to simplify the planning grid. Since you've seen an example already, let me suggest that you pause the video and try to work this problem on your own. Once you're done, you can use the video to check your work and spot any mistakes you might have made. Beginning inventory of 0 plus production of 120 minus demand of 90 yields an ending inventory of 30 in period 1. That averages to 15. For period 2, beginning inventory of 30 plus production of 120 minus demand of 125 yields an ending inventory of 25. That averages to 27.5. For period 3, beginning inventory of 25 plus production of 120 minus demand of 115 yields an ending inventory of 30. That averages to 27.5. For period 4, beginning inventory of 30 plus production of 120 minus demand of 110 yields an ending inventory of 40. That averages to 35. For period 5, beginning inventory of 40 plus production of 120 minus demand of 125 yields an ending inventory of 35. That averages to 37.5. For period 6, beginning inventory of 35 plus production of 120 minus demand of 150 yields an ending inventory of 5. That averages to 20. For period 7, beginning inventory of 5 plus production of 120 minus demand of 125 yields an ending inventory of 0. That averages to 2.5. For period 8, production and demand are both 120 so inventory remains at 0 and the average inventory is 0. How did you do? If you had problems, please review the earlier tutorials. The plan is costed out exactly as it was in the first two tutorials. In this and the remaining tutorials on aggregate planning, the cost of the plans will be shown but not narrated. The final cost of this plan is $9,765. Do you understand how to get this or do you need to review prior tutorials? For this next example, we will make one minor change to example number 1. We will swap the demand of 90 in period 1 and the 150 in period 6. Since total demand remains 960, level production will remain 120 per period. The cost will remain the same. For period 1, production of 120 and demand of 150 leaves 0 in inventory and back orders of 30. Average inventory is 0. These back orders are the difference between this example and the first example. When demand is lower at the beginning, early production is higher than demand and you are building up inventory before you need it. When demand is higher at the beginning, you start off with inadequate levels of inventory and must use back orders. If back orders are not allowed in this scenario, then level production is not possible. Instead, you must produce at higher levels in the beginning and then level off later. Dealing with that is beyond the scope of an introductory operations course and so will not be covered in these tutorials. For period 2, demand exceeds production by 5 units, so ending inventory remains zero and back orders increase by 5. For period 3, production exceeds demand by 5 units, so back orders drop to 30. For period 4, production exceeds demand by 10 units, so back orders drop to 20. 
For period 5, demand exceeds production by 5 units, so back orders rise to 25. For period 6, production exceeds demand by 30 units. That eliminates the back order and raises ending inventory to 5. That yields an average inventory of 2.5. For period 7, demand exceeds production by 5 units, so ending inventory drops to 0 and inventory averages to 2.5. Finally, in period 8, production equals demand, so inventory remains at zero with an average of zero. The final cost of this plan is $9,885 as compared to $9,765 when the higher demand was in period 6. The higher cost is because it is more expensive to backwater production than keep it in inventory in this example. For this next example, we will make one minor change to example number 1. We will increase demand in period 1 to 100. Since total demand increases to 970, level production increases to 121.25 per period. Since we cannot produce a partial unit, we will produce 122 per period. The cost will remain the same. For period 1, demand is 100 and production is 122, so inventory goes from 0 to 22 for an average of 11. For period 2, demand is 125 and production is only 122, so inventory drops from 22 to 19 for an average of 20.5. For period 3, demand is 115 and production is 122, so inventory goes up from 19 to 26 for an average of 22.5. For period 4, demand is 110 and production is 122, so inventory goes up from 26 to 38 for an average of 32. For period 5, demand is 125 and production is only 122, so inventory drops from 38 to 35 for an average of 36.5. For period 6, demand is 150 and production is only 122, so inventory drops from 35 to 7 for an average of 21. For period 7, demand is 125 and production is only 122, so inventory drops from 7 to 4 for an average of 5.5. For period 8, demand is 120 and production is 122, so inventory increases from 4 to 6 for an average of 5. For this last period, it would have been acceptable to produce only 116, so ending inventory would be 0. The total cost of this plan is $9,914. Of course, it would be slightly lower had we produced only 116 in the last period. How are you doing so far? Do you need to review? This final example is for you to try. The demand for eight periods is shown on the slide. There is adequate capacity to produce all the units in regular time. There is beginning inventory of 50 units. Regular time production costs $11 per unit. The inventory holding cost is $4 per item per period. Back order costs are $25 per item per period. Since you've seen several examples already, let me suggest that you pause the video and try to work this problem on your own. Once you're done, you can use this video to check your work and spot any mistakes you might have made. We need 11,750 over the 8 periods, but we already have 50, so we only need to produce 11,700. That divided by 8 equals 1,462.5. We round that up and we'll be producing 1,463. In period 1, we need 1,200 but produce 1,463, so inventory goes up from the beginning inventory of 50 to 313. That yields an average inventory of 181.5. For period 2, we need 1150 but produce 1463, so inventory goes up from 313 to 626 for an average of 469.5. For period 3, we need 1300 but produce 1463, so inventory goes up from 626 to 789 for an average inventory of 707.5. For period 4, we need 1500 but only produce 1463, so inventory drops from 789 to 752 for an average inventory of 770.5. For period 5, we need 1600 but produce only 1463, so inventory drops from 752 to 615 for an average inventory of 683.5. For period 6, we need 1550 but produce only 1463, so inventory drops from 615 to 528 for an average inventory of 571.5. For period 7, we need 1,700 but only produce 1,463, so inventory drops from 528 to 291 for an average inventory of 409.5. For period 8, we need 1,750 but produce only 1,463, so inventory drops from 291 to 4 for an average inventory of 147.5. It would be acceptable to only produce 1,459, so ending inventory drops to zero. How did you do? Did you get it all correct? 
The resulting plan has a total cost of $144,508. Do you understand how to get this or do you need to review prior tutorials? If you found that this video helped you with your operations management problem, please consider liking the video and even subscribing to the channel.